And hello all my fellow nerds out there. This is Oracle Nerd Richie and welcome back to Phoenix Wright's Truth and Ace of or, sorry, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright Truth and Consequences, the Phoenix Wright fan game. So I've been messing around with OBS and I figured out how to set my screens up like this. Uh, you know, I wanted to make it like this so that it looked nicer for the video, so that you know, it wouldn't really like be just this weird vertical plane you're looking at it on and everything else is just a black space. Like that that's just kind of odd. So I wanted to so I messed around with OBS and figured out how to do this. So and this and this is as good as it's gonna look. So let's just go ahead, continue with the story and see what we got. Testimony, she's the killer. The killer is obviously Miss Sky. What happened is obvious. She snuck into the lab late at night during using her ID card. She and Dr. Tony must have gone into some kind of argument. Whatever the reason, she stabbed Dr. Tony twice in the chest. He is right in the autopsy at least. Hmm, so you don't so you don't know why she would have done this. Of course not. Why would I know that? Very well. Miss Sykes, you may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination. Alright. And you really do think that. Hmm. Hold it! Why would she sneak into the lab in the middle of the night? It's not for me to ponder such inconsequential details. But it is important. She'd have a pretty strong reason to do that. Yeah, who would break into a science lab just for kicks? The only valid reason is to do that is to steal something. You're not hoping, Kay. You want a reason? How about this? She and Dr. Tony must have gone into some kind of argument. Hold it! About what about? How should I know? It, I wasn't involved. <laughs> me to know. <coughs> Given your insistence on her guilt, I'd be interested in your theories, at least. That's your job, Tetra. I'm here to offer my own testimony, and no more. The idea of her being found out not found out guilty is no concern of yours. Oh, it's certain if she could be the bloodbutting serial killer for all we know. How <coughs> she's planning to murder any scientist.
most of us fall under that category. Jeez, I can't talk today. <laughs> that brings up an interesting point. Perhaps Dr. Tomi was, was the aggressor. If she attacked, she said, him, it would be justified as self-defense, wouldn't it? Unlikely. Remember that there were two staff members. One staff could end up to get away. His death could be, could be very well, well be accidental. Yeah, it's 
Maybe we'll close a look at the client photo. Let's see photo. See the way his body is positioned? You'd, you'd have to reach pretty far to write Emma. Even if you don't see a difference the between the bloody words, you can't deny that. I suppose not. Even so, the name Sky could very well have been written by the victim. It's darker, which indicates that it, could, that it had dried out long before the picture was taken. That's true. I do not think it's possible Dr. Tony really wrote that word. And that still implicates Miss Sky in the murder. I'm not so sure. All it implicates is someone with Sky in their name. It could be a first or last name. It's it's unisex too. But the killer would have to use Miss Sky's ID to get in. Whoever had the ID was a man. We've already covered that. A man called Sky. Wait a second. Have we heard that before? Your Honor, I like to call a witness by mistake. I have a hunch, and I'd like to have it confirmed or denied. Are you asking to dismiss this witness? No, I'd like a new witness to speak to Dr. Entis for a moment. Does the prosecution have any objections to Miss Sykes? Her hunch? Not at all. Alright then, I'll allow it. Who would you like to call to the stand?
freak out. Boldface liar. Like seriously, I, I know, I, know, I can tell he's already lying. Yeah, is it, do, do is he plausible? Possible. So he's full of holes, and you haven't even started yet. True, but I have a feeling, feeling he's got a response for something, for everything. I can tell Mr. Edgeworth thinks he's guilty too, but he's already been told off once, which means it's up to me to figure that out. You know, no pressure. You've got this, Athena. I mean, you've got us. You got me too. I'm on the side of truth. I think we'll be okay. Miss Sykes, you may begin your cross examination. Hold it! Since when did she 
even know what the research was about? He knew what she had to do. It was quite impressive. The research was made for the quite a lot of money, too. So you think she killed him for that? That sounds a bit far-fetched. Just a pleasant or random person in the middle of the night. 
go let him have it, Athena. She's wearing a lab coat. I would be interested in knowing what she's studying. <laughs> so that when she opened So was that when she openly admitted that she was like no the first for me? You think I'm an idiot, Mr. Sykes? Please see what you're doing. You're just trying to make things look stupid. I hardly think so. She's really but clarifying the points you were making. It is not stupid, perhaps you should have been reevaluated. She didn't openly say it. I am her. You have heard talking to her that she wanted to come and tell me. What sort of things would she have said to me to confirm that? I guess it's the expectation for Verbit. Verbit him, I should know. So you would make that you have inferred it wrong.
Describe the tonic. So I said that she replaced it with an identical liquid. Really? Identical? <clears throat> because he the word he uses is chartreuse to describe the color. But if you look at the crime scene photo, you see these test tubes on the table? I do, is that important? Let's take a closer look, shall we? Do you see the problem now? There is no problem. It looks exactly like the tonic. Dr. Entis, that's the green tonic Dr. Tommy was writing about. I... What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that the, that the replacement tonic is orange. Orange? Dr. Intis, that fact is quite easily apparent. There's a significant difference between orange and green. There sure is. The culprit had to have noticed those liquids with nothing alike. Unless, of course, they were colorblind. <laughs> oh, 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 we got him this time, fellas. But, besides, someone who is not colorblind wouldn't make such a obvious mistake. No, I definitely wouldn't. How many women are colorblind, did you say? I believe I said it was 0.5%. Emma, are you colorblind by any chance? No, I'm not. You can test me if you want. So you can plainly see that this liquid is orange and not green. Really obvious. And what if I accomplish theory in sight? Can you disprove that? Easily. If Emma were an accomplice to the murder, she would have switched the liquid before the police got there. After all, it had to be tested on her. There's no way she didn't see it. You know that you know what liquid is green though? What if there has been a test tube in his front pocket? I'm wondering about that too, that doctor is what is it you got there? Oh, his front oh that! Actually, I, I thought that was a pen, honestly. <laughs> I actually honestly thought that was a pen. This is nothing, nothing that concerns you. Then you shouldn't have any problem with with us taking a look at it. No, you can't take it from me. 
guess they didn't do it with Paco. So then why are you being so defensive? Wait, I have a question. If Dr. Tony were to work out for Tetra Labs, why would Dr. Francis have to steal it to work? An excellent question, Miss Sykes. Uh, Miss Sykes, have you an answer? What these items would explain why Dr. Tony wasted the time of the time to Tetra Labs? I mean, his own note here, right? She'll know, she'll know soon enough, but as, but as I hold the beautiful chartreuse too in my hand, I start to worry. No, I cannot let them have it. They must never know my triumph. It is far too dangerous to fall into the wrong hands. Explain why Dr. Twain wouldn't give up the time to get to the lab. His research dog, of course. Take that! It says already Dr. Twain's notes. He didn't trust the to lab. He didn't want his work falling into the wrong hands. He refers to to a woman he calls A B in his notes. It likely it likely means Aura Blackwell, the scientist whose lab lab he's working. If he thought his research was good, I bet she she'd have given him a lot of access. Maybe access to this too. Oh, it- oh wait, probably access to Kronko's data wipe! It has to be, right? Oh, what the? Okay, they cannot wipe their own data unless ordered by Aura Blackwell, who is currently in prison. Take that! Take that! Oh, I get it! I think he wants to control his down in his notes, and the culprit happened to see them. That must be why he went back. Because he, because he was spotted by Konko and wanted to wipe her But he went to Konko, not Konko. It's easy to explain. And this is why Dr. Nick went to Konko instead of Konko. Konko has no antennae. Yeah, cause... Yeah, cause like... Yeah, because Plonko doesn't have inten antennae. Plonko does. Eva smacked the Plonko earlier that day and broke off one of her antennae. She dropped her ID and a good doctor Entis found it shortly after. Now you happen to know what those antennae were best, best in pairs. And Plonko's other antennae was also removed. For someone who couldn't differentiate red and green, she she and Klonko would be nearly identical. <coughs> and the robot controls show a picture of the robot you were working on. And because Dr. Entis is colorblind, he chose the one without antennae. Because when he saw Plonko, she didn't have any. The most common form of colorblindness is red-green colorblindness. And it just so happens that Plonko is red and Klonko is green. But the tonic was orange, not red. Actually, that makes it even, it even easier to prove the color was colorblind. Chartreuse is a greenish yellow, or yellowy green, and orange is red and yellow. Orange and chartreuse would be in the same would be the same color if you couldn't tell red and green apart. Besides, there is one flaw in your logic. Dr. Tony wrote sky in his own blood. So so you say. Why would he do that unless he unless she was the, his killer? I've been thinking about that, and I might have an answer. If we can get Dr. Ed to do this, we'd be able to clear this up right away. I take off his sunglasses. <laughs> I don't think that, that I don't think that'd be the right answer. I mean, I mean unless. Okay, you know what? Let's just give it a try. Take my sunglasses off? Why should I? I am extremely sensitive to light. I have the right to re reasonable accommodation. Normally, yes, but since it pertains to the case, I think we can make an exception. Because the robot's facial recognition software can be fooled by things like sunglasses. So if we want to take them off, we can easily clear this up. Okay. What's the matter, Dr. Entis? Could you be hiding something? The name is Dr. S.I. Entis, isn't it? 
Did you be hiding that your first name is Sky? Oh ho ho! You can't prove that! We can't even take his own glasses off. I, I refuse. It's quite alright. I think we've got enough without that detail. Mr. Joe, given what we found, we seem to really have a good idea what happened. Oh yes, we do. On the ball. Hi, Your Honor. How about we go over everything that happened? Then you'll be able to follow the events much more easily. Closing argument! What really happened? It all started the day before the murder. If you look at Dr. Shelby's law, you can see the, the thing that he was suspicious of Kestrel Laboratories. So when his experiment was successful, he didn't want to hand it over. But the culprit, his superior, found out he was on the place for a major discovery. So they confronted him about it, but he refused to hand it over. So they Emma went to the lab so he, he could test his research on her. She gave him a blood sample, and I assume for reasons, I think for reasons. After the experiment, Emma was on her way out of how she got her ID card. But she smacked on the Bronco with the medical card. I bet she didn't register Emma at all because of what happened. So she didn't know Emma was a woman. The cover happened on the ID card and took it with them. They, they knew they they knew they could use it to break into the lab, and that's exactly what they did. They used the back the back end of the ID card and snuck into the lab where Dr. Tony was working. They confronted Dr. Tony, who used the who refused to handle the And that's when they tried the nearest scaffold and stabbed him twice. Then they stole his card to Dr. Tony's notes to know what he was working on. Since they were colorblind, it was a completely different color. While running out, they were spotted by Tonko, who didn't have an antenna. They probably didn't think much of it, but Tonko registered Emma as a man. He probably read Emma's name on her ID, too. When they returned home, they discovered that Tonko had access to the role of control. So they decided to return to the scene of the crime wait, and wait for one who had seen them. But when they got there, they noticed that Dr. Tony had written his killer's name in his blood. They probably realized that Emma's last, last name was their first name, was, and their first name were the same name. By that time, Dr. Tony's blood had, had dried in Fiji. But the sky's blood still was once sealed, thus much easier to use. So they used some of Emma's blood to write Emma above sky. Then traced it over with the woman's left of Dr. Tony's blood so his DNA would show up. And even before I weighed Emma, they sent Emma's ID and Dr. Tony's DNA. Then they went to Coco and left the lab waiting for someone to find the body. Emma came back and probably find her idea and he had happened to find her So they walked in on her and accused her of killing him. Emma accused, they were home free. They had stolen all the research and claimed to take all the credit. And that person killed Tony and stole it to The research and told it was you! Dr. S. I. N. T. S. Oh, is he gonna freak out? Is he gonna freak out? What's going on? What's he doing? Oh, Jesus! Thank you. 
the test? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Guy has, has normal color vision. She is not colorblind. Ah, oh, then that clears it up. Finally, I feel like I must ask Mr. Kronko one last thing. Is Dr. Entis the Sky to whom you are referring? Yes. His face is a hundred percent match. Then there is no need to deliberate any further. And as for my verdict? This court finds the defendant Emma Sky not guilty. Let's go! Ah, oh, this this is a victory. Uh, I can't believe we actually won that case. Court is adjourned. Woo! September sixth, three o seven p.m. District Court, court Defendant Robbie. What a relief! Yeah, no kidding. Sorry, I kind of freaked out on you, Cor. That's understandable. I wouldn't want to go to prison either. Did you see the way Mr. Edwards was defending me like that? Even the judge had to remind him that he was a prosecutioner. I guess our pleasant trees meant something to him after all. Athena, you did a great job. I knew you could do it. Though, I'm a little puzzled at Edward's behavior. Yeah, me too. It looks like he wanted to leave. He's not usually that cooperative. Don't I know it? He was all he was all ready to accuse me of mur murder last time I had to deal with him. I'd say he's supposed to respect you. But sometimes I'm not even sure if he respects me. Come on, he respects you. <laughs> Peace. In its own way. <laughs> that was a nice change of pace. I might, I might have to cheat on you again, Nick. Please find a better way to phrase that. I hope I did okay, Athena. I tried my best. Are you kidding? I can't believe that was your first trial. You're a natural. You're not just saying that. I think you did a little better than Maya, Maya's hurt on her first trial. He's right, he didn't even have to resort to paper airplanes. Paper airplanes? I, I never told you about that. It seems there are a lot of stories you haven't told us. Hey pal, been a while now, huh? Come to you, where have you been? I don't think I've seen you since your wedding. You have kids now? Yeah, two kids. My daughter's two. Two and my son's two months. I'll still, I'll have to, be, I'll have to have you guys over. But hey, this is this is the lawyer you've been mentoring. One of them, yeah. Apollo's overseas now, but he'll be back in December. Yeah, I invited him over. I invited him to my christening ceremony. Christening ceremony. I'm finally go going to be a master of terrain. Why are remember you. I should hope so. And this? No. This is not Little Pearl. I'm not so little anymore, am I? <coughs> yeah. Time has flown. You were real cute back then. I think she's still pretty cute. I'm, tr 
Lucy, of course, no way I forget you anytime soon. Life's been busy, you know, but now I'm back. I for one, I for one, am looking forward to working with you. You did great, you totally destroyed us. I don't think Pet Mr. Edward wanted to win. Yeah, that was weird. You should see him outside the courtroom. That's brutal, huh? Win whimpering. They've been like whimpering. Speaking of which, where'd he go? <coughs> yeah, I won't ask him about that. No idea. He said he had some business to take care of. Ordinarily, ordinarily, I wouldn't admit being outrun, but man, he deserves it. I think that Entis guy freaks me out a little. Freaks me out a little. If I had a dog for everyone who has threatened revenge on me, I'd be able to retire. He was probably just blob blobby eating. It's not like he could deny what happened. When I saw the bailiff wrestling that, that wrestling that test tube out of his hand, he was great. Whatever that story is working on, he'll be credited as both. And a jerk won't even be a, be a footnote. I'm going to tell you, his research will change everything. I, I don't even know how he did it, but I never experienced anything like that. It was totally mind-blowing. Science is amazing, isn't it? You know what my favorite kind of science is? Chemistry. Because you and Mr. Nick have so much of it? No. Well, yeah, I guess we kind of do. But no. <laughs> You know, cooking is technically chemistry. The yummiest kind. Hey, how about we all go to murders? My tree. <coughs> it's not every day you destroy Edgeworth in your court. I thought I'd be wrong for paying. Do you want to be? Nah, of course not. It's not exactly a tradition, is it? <coughs> so it doesn't matter if we break it. You're planning on leaving without me? Be silly, come on with us. I suppose I can spare a few hours. You did very well, Athena. I was quite impressed. <laughs> That's high praise coming from you. I'll be sure to tell my sister she owes you one. She'll be very annoyed, but that just makes the your victory all the more sweet for me. So, are we having our impromptu chemistry lesson or what? Sure, let's go. Oh! And with that, case one... Ca oh! Well, case one is done, as far as I can see. I think about that day a lot now. At the time, I thought Mr. Edgeworth took the, the case just to see me see Emma get a fair trial. And yeah, that was definitely part of it. But if I had known the real reason he did it... Actually, it's probably a good thing I didn't know. Most of us make choices every single day without thinking much about them. But what influences us to choose what we do? Oh? Some people make choices after careful planning and consideration. Aww. While others make choices in the moment based on how they feel. <coughs> hey, Francisca! Both methods have their values but I tend to make choices based on feelings. Because sometimes how we feel in the moment is what's important. Aw, oh, Nick. <coughs> Ooh! The time we spend with the people we love? The laughter and conversation? Aw, oh, Edgeworth and Trucy. They might not seem like all that much. Aww. But looking back, sometimes they're the moments that matter the most. Wait, were they, were they were all these from previous cases? I thought everything would stay pretty much the same. That, my friends, would always be there by my side. But I know now that life can change in a second. And if I knew how much we were going to change, how much pain was on its way, I would have chosen to cherish every moment I, I had while it lasted.
Oh! Jeez, that scared the shit out of me. Oh? Oh, wait, is that it? Oh, damn.
Oh, wait, isn't there? Huh? September seventh, six to one p.m. Edgeworth's office. Miles, what's this all about? We've been acting weird for a while now. <gasps> My old friend Siska makes an appearance, and it was. And finally, it was towards the end. Oh my gosh. <coughs> Did you have to wait until I got here? I'm jet lagged, Miles. This had better be important enough to warrant an eight, an eight hour flight. Yeah, what do you mean by cancel whatever plans you have to make and make sure you can, you're here by six? It's of the utmost importance. This is the sort of thing that ought to be discussed in person. <coughs> Is something wrong? Yes, something is very, very wrong. Someone. Someone infiltrated my office and left this on my desk about a week ago. Oh? But that's... It can't be! What's that, a letter? An invitation, or perhaps a challenge? No, that's not... That's not what I think it is, is it? What is it? I'm afraid it is. Let's not, let's not make any assumptions just yet. There's always a chance it's a copycat. I thought that, but given recent events, I believe this this to be a genuine article. <clears throat> Take a look. You're invited, dearest Miles Edgeworth. You are all of, all of your guests are cordially invited to the most exciting day of the rest of your life. The scope of which you cannot even fathom. Your esteemed guest will not want to miss, miss it for the world. For it, for it will be truly, truly heart stopping. <coughs> that's kind of, that's kind of hard for all of us to read, Miles. Uh, of course, my apologies. I'll read it out for you. You're invited. Dear Smiles, I you and all of your guests are cordially and courteously invited to the most exciting day of the rest of your life. The scope of which you cannot even fathom. Your same guests will not want to miss it for the world. Who will tr be truly heartstopping. Hunter Kestrel. Wait, do they mean... Do they mean that Hunter Kestrel that the guy mentioned earlier? Industries? I'm sure you've heard of it. He's a lot worse than that. He's one of the most dangerous people in the world right now. He's the line man. Wait, I think I've heard of him. The serial killer? Not just a serial killer. He's... well, he's evil. He always picks a target for his next killing spree. Always a well known trust. He creates a challenge to see if they can catch him. No one best him yet. And the last two he's going up against. It, ne it never ends well for the target. Even worse for his loved ones. Loved ones? But he can't know who Miles cares about the most. I mean, you're not the most affectionate guy, you know. Unfortunately, he's done his home this time. He knew! Why the four of us? I didn't think we were that close. He, he didn't send you that care? Didn't he send you that care package? Yeah, I guess so. I'd be flattered you consider me a friend then. I'm 
here than myself. Surely he knows our friends. <coughs> if he's if he's not inclined, included here, I'm, I'm apprehensive about what he must have planned for me. <coughs> Although, there's always a chance he doesn't know. It's not like we regularly spend time together. He's right? Isn't that Athena's boss? Yes, you met him today. He and I go way back. Maybe you should tell him. Not for now. You know how he works. I can't exactly hide this from you. Not for you. You're going to need extra security. Effective immediately. Chester always attacks the targets. The form of psychological torture. You're all in danger. Right as well. I'll be sure to have him trail for a while. <coughs> you sure we can't just tell him? He'll know eventually, but not now. Not there's a chance Kestrel. A chance Kestrel doesn't know about it. But given the plan of the last two times, his killing spree is just beginning. And there's always a grand finale at the end. Someone. Someone always does. Anyway, like at this time, I won't let it happen. <coughs> He's never gone against us before. We'll beat him. Yeah, this sicko is going down this time. In rain of this revelation, I will be I will be staying here until, until all this is cleared up. Because girls have a connection with the I won't be any safer overseas. I have been contemplating returning for a while, so I suppose this is a good reason for any. Are you okay? Okay. This is every every prosecutor's worst nightmare. Of course I'm not okay. I don't usually like to say it. This is terrifying. I don't want anything to happen to any of you because of me. Nothing's going to happen to us. We'll beat him. Wow. Um, okay. I was not expecting that. Oh, jeez. Okay, so I'm guessing that means there's probably going to be more to come. But I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this video here for now, guys. Um, so. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, be sure to leave a like. Comment what you think. Share this video with your friends and be sure to subscribe to the bell so you don't miss a single notification. I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye. You say you wanna try, but you never do.